It's really my pleasure to be here in my own country, uh, a different place. And uh, we've been, as, as uh, Jerry said, to mountains, now to the sea. Maybe we could be in my own town next to the Danube River someday. Um, I'll talk to you about aqua photomics, uh, and I'll start with um, introduction of two things. We use spectroscopy um, to analyze water, and I'll say a few, few words about near-infrared spectroscopy, and then I'll tell you what aquaphotomics means. And then I'll go to two papers that we published by Charles, I don't know by, by what. On the same date, <coughs> um, we, we got accepted on July 2nd. There was a, a paper in uh, Nature's online scientific reports and in PLOS One. So, as um, Alberto said this, uh, this morning, we have to be strategically right and get some papers in uh, well-read journals and then start by, by this telling uh, a bit more about what we know for water. Um, I'll start with this slide because I like this is aquaphotomics is all about aqua is water and this is the first character, Japanese char character and sounds, Mizu. And um, the, the second character is water, uh, no, it's uh, light, which is uh, Hikari in, in Japanese. So, the infrared spectroscopy. Now, in medical science, it is used not traditionally as any other spectroscopy quantitatively to measure components. It is used for monitoring. And I think we have to stress, it, it, it was uh, mentioned just um, um, this morning, is very important as a dimension. So we can measure, but if we add time, we add lots of information. So these people use the infrared light for pulse oximetry. This is quantitative approach. So and they use only two, three wavelengths, two, three energy levels, because they penetrate very well in, in uh, human tissue. And um, they use the infrared light because it penetrates very well also into the tissue to follow the oxy the oxyhemoglobin ratio, which means the functioning the, the fun of brain areas, which is you can do function near infrared instead of functional MRI in order to follow which part of the brain are activated. This is possible only because near infrared light penetrates. It is not fully absorbed by the water as infrared light is. It is partially absorbed, which gives us the possibility to analyze the light coming back from the water or aqua system or biological system. So this light is invisible for us. It is next to the red light. It is, has less energy than the visible and UV. And it has a specific oh, in, in the, the electromagnetic spectrum, this is infrared light, but this is near-infrared, which is from 700 to 2500 nanometers, so very short, uh, comparatively speaking, range. Uh, why I... <coughs> this is specifically this near-infrared, uh, we call it, next to the visible. Some people call it far visible. Uh, the beauty is that it really penetrates about up to 10 centimeters into uh, aqueous or water system or, or biological system. 
So this is the spectrophotometer sky how they look. We can use fibers. Um, <clears throat> we have used fiber probes and <clears throat> handheld instruments to analyze <clears throat> sorry, different uh, biological systems in vivo monitored. Okay? So what, what we found, these are serious, I, I'm just jumping because I want to go to, to the, the content of my presentation, but this is just so many systems that we have analyzed with the spectroscopy and we have found that we can use the spectra of the system over the time, the change of the spectral pattern of the system as a biomarker. So we could use the spectral pattern for diagnosis. And this is an interesting, this is an inflammation of other in cows, this is prion disease in, ma in mouse, and I will relate this to um, Luc Montagnier's talk. We found prion disease, we, could, we were able to diagnose prion disease. Um, we inoculate 40 mice, uh, mice for two years, two different experiments every year, and we consistently found out that we were able to diagnose um, the disease firstly in the abdomen, not in the brain, where you would expect to find prion disease. So um, it is a lot to understand in the future about what actually is causing the disease. And HIV again, HIV diagnosis, we can do this on plasma, on serum. So, um, and this is very, this is the spectral pattern. Uh, and the specific spectral pattern that relates to oxidative stress, as, as Luke mentioned. So, um, one interesting thing is that knee infrared is an overtone spectroscopy. Overtone means that vibrations, it, it is not the main vibration with the highest amplitude, which is in the infrared region. This is the second, third, and fourth amplitude, like a, a, a bending. This is a hook, this is the, the hook's law. The amplitude goes 100,000, 10 times, 10,000 times less which means that if we have a component, a molecule that is at very low concentration, we are not able to see and to measure this molecule by knee infrared vibrations of the molecule in the knee infrared range, because it's a very low concentration. But you will see, we, will, we, we can measure, we can make a perfect models only if we use absorbance of the water. And by all this system, analyzing all the systems, what we found out that we were able to diagnose uh, that diseases only by looking at the spectra of the water. Because what is changing is that water is playing as a molecular mirror when illuminated with knee infrared. You know that water is a mirror for the visible light. Water is a mirror as well with knee infrared. So all the molecules are changing the water structure. They are changing the strength of the hydrogen bond and the covalent bond. The strength and the angle uh, in the molecule in the molecule is changing because of the surrounding other molecules. Now this is the spectrum of the water. I'm sure you don't see anything, but if you analyze the spectra, which is the number two re requirement is the multivariate analysis of, of, of all the spectral data that we have. We have to have a lot of spectral data for many samples to, to see, to, to make the model. But if we analyze this, we could see many, many absorbance bands underneath. We could see that really water is not just one single molecule with one covalent bond. We could see that, that water is a system, is a molecular system. And, and the strength of the covalent bond is changing. It's following the environment, it, uh, as you want to call it, epigenetics or whatever. Now, probably you will understand easily, this is the, the spectrum of the sun, the intensity of the sunlight. Um, Volodya told, says that, that we know lots of water found in the space. 
and you see this is the, the maximum of intensity of the sunlight coming to, the, to um, uh, measured above the atmosphere is uh, here is, is above the atmosphere here is on the sea level it, this is the visible light this is from 400 to 700 nanometer visible so the, the highest intensity the lowest is here the half of the spectra of light of sunlight is near infrared light half of the spectrum so and, and you see we don't get all the light the sunlight because it's absorbed by the atmosphere but you could see that it is also absorbed by the space from the sun to the earth so there is water this is the spectrum of water very uh, but this absorbance spectra how much what white water absorbs it absorbs a lot in uv it absorbs nothing nearly invisible so that's why it's so bright outside and infrared absorbs a lot so it, it, to use infrared we need a very thin samples but the infrared has a specific spectral pattern and also we can monitor, we can use um, a native samples, we, we don't need preparations, we just can do this non-invasively. Now, I, so what we have to pay attention is about this hydrogen bond bonding and the covalent bond that strength, as I said, and angle depends on the environment. Now, um, what is molecular mirror? And, um, today we started with uh, reductionism and systematic approach and analysis and synthesis. I think that, that these are the two uh, sides of the coin, of a coin, so as a yin yang. And so we have to have them both, I think. Um, but aquaphotonics gives a, a, a another, the, the other side. We, do, we don't go molecule by molecule, we just look at the system and we have a holistic approach to the system. We could, by looking at all molecular, molecule, water molecules, the, the water molecular system, and um, that, as, as I said, other molecules are mirrored by water, so we could have the idea and knowledge and numbers, so we could measure what's happening with the system as it is. Um, so, we talk about uh, uh, Albert St. George and also uh, in the 16th century it, it is said that water is a matrix of the world and uh, we have to take, pay attention to the two matrices, water and electromagnetic field. And this is what we propose with aquaphotonics. We introduce perturbations to the system, we activate because water is such a sensitive um, um, conglomeration of molecules. Um, it, it gets the influence of the temperature strongly, humidity, pressure, everything. So if we talk about epigenetics, it goes directly to the water and the water influences DNA, etc. So probably. And it is uh, vice versa, it is a, a play. Um, but in order to use this spectroscopy, what we have to know, we have to know to have the database of water absorbance bands and I call them water matrix coordinates. At those coordinates means windows. At those coordinates, we, we can measure matter, water, and we need perturbations to activate those, um, those bands in order to, get, to change entropy, to get more information for the system. So, uh, water matrix coordinates, WOMOX, and we found under We've concentrated on the first orbiton. We know much, much more about the second and the third already. But under the first orbiton, we, we have found 12 coordinates, 12 bands that we could use as a point to transfer information. And we could identify those bands with different water structures. Now, uh, I know uh, uh, we get nervous when we, when we say what is structured water and do we understand what is structured water at all? No, we don't. And I cannot say that I understand, I understand really. Um, but uh, we could see that we have this 
conformations like we have four, four molecules of water on the top of them. If we have this OH, then this covalent bond has a different absorbance band, a specific band. The same for two, for one. Also, we have, if, if here we have oxygen, two oxygen, we have different, again, different band. So these are coordinates of specific water structures. And, and what is structure, what is a different discussion, I think. So aquagram is a, is a graph that we use to express how, what is the water profile, what is the water molecular profile seen by the absorbance of light of um, water-specific bands. Now, this is the spectrum of vapor, and this is the spectrum of water. You see that they overlap each other. So in the water, we have what, uh, vapor and ice at the same time, but in different ratio. And the ice uh, spectra is some, some way here. Now, maybe if you remember now, the right side of this aquagram, this is the high energy bands, absorbent bands of the water. They, um, this is the less, less uh, hydrogen bonded water. If we talk about two, for example, when you increase the temperature of, of water, less hydrogen bonded water increases and hydrogen bonded water decreases. Ice decreases the vapor, vapor part. The vapor part is the left high energy part, this one. This absorbance increases here. And in ice, this absorbance increases, this part. OK. Now, when we increase the temperature, as I said, um, this is the spectrum moves has a blue shift. When we decrease the temperature, it has a right shift. So this is the right side of, of high temperature water, and this is the low temperature water, aquagram. Um, now, I'll talk about UV induced changes of the DNA. What we did, this is a paper that I told you is the first one, published in July 2nd. Um, but before that, I, I will show you before this study, what we did, we just um, we used two different circular double stranded, stranded DNA and uh, linear double stranded DNA. We took spectra, the same concentration. Okay, you can't see anything. Sorry about that. So uh, uh, you will believe me. I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. Um, uh, the spectra were different um, um, for different um, DNA, but this is uh, what we did. We did subtracted molecule and um, of, of um, um, this DNA, and we diluted it. And I just wanted to show when we do so, what happens. This is so-called free water molecules, 14, 10, 14, 16 area. This is the ice clusters. Uh, with four hydrogen bond bonded, water bonded, uh, hydrogen bonded water. So, what you can see is when we dilute or when we subtract molecule, um, molecule with DNA has more free water. This is very interesting. This is water solvation shell, specific band, specific profi profile. So. What our DNA is doing is cutting hydrogen bond, decreasing the hydrogen bonded part of the, of the water, and increasing the, the less hydrogen bonded part. Now, I want to tell you, this is a new, new thing that I, I was thinking for the last few years gradually, but I, I needed more and more consistent results. Now, when I think of water, I, I imagine as two parts. This is, I called, the motor part, working part. And this one is the battery part, the, the energy storing part. And there is a very important part, which is in between. Here you don't see it. Um, which is the buffer. Those are the water molecules. Probably this is highly related to uh, what uh, Emilio 
um, and uh, people um, talking about coherent zones. So this is so important. The molecules that are moving from one zone to the other, from one coherent zone to the other, they are those that are actually um, stabilizing the water. If water, yes, water is self-organizing system, and this self-organization is coming from these water structures that are keeping the balance between the two, the motor and the battery. Now, if we subtract the second illusion, so we, we see, you could see already C2, C3, C4, these are the water matrix coordinates, I call them, these are these in nanometers, and each of those coordinates is related to a certain function. Uh, we don't know them all, of course, but I've seen them in different implants, in cells, in, uh, in the different, adding different molecules as protectors. And uh, increasing one or the other, you see like D5, you, you have 10 to minus 5 dilution and you could get both. You could have well, highly organized water and, and also less hydrogen than water, mostly on the same level. But you lose this medium, um, the uh, low level members of the medium, the transition part. And, and all this is related to function, to, to, to different uh, functionality. Okay, um, now th the, the paper is what we showed. We showed that we look at this, so we work with micromolar uh, concentration of DNA. There is no way that near infrared light can measure m the molecule itself. So we were able to, to see this high correlation to make a model only because we were looking only at the first orbiton of the water. And you could see that when we increase or change the, the, the concentration of DNA, we have positive as I, I showed you in, in other uh, DNA studies, we increase the less hydrogen bonded part of the water. Um, now, if we introduce UV light to the sample with DNA, you see that the, the, this is um, the control and the red is UV light uh, emitted sample. And these are the, the, the water absorber bands that are working. So because of changes at, in this area, we get this separation. So we could identify, identify what's happening. Now, this is a model, a beautiful correlation between the UV dose from 0 to 20 kilojoule per, per square meter. And look at this, what happens? Reverse. UV light is ordering water molecules. UV light is making water structure. It's making more hydrogen bond in water and less hydrogen, non-hydrogen bond in water. Now, this is the concentration of, di of the dimer produced by, the, by DNA as a result of the UV radiation. Now, the same effect, but we could measure, we were able to measure with that accuracy with light interacting with water. Much better than HPLC. You can go to the paper, so we have, we compared, to, we measured by HPLC, we measured by infrared, and you could see that we could, an infrared light can see the changes in the water caused by the modification of DNA uh, as a result of UV. Now, another paper was bacterial functionality. So, um, I liked what, what uh, Luke said this morning for probiotics and non-probiotic. We looked at um, uh, non-probiotic bacteria is the blue, moderate is green, and probiotic is red. Now, we wanted to see, because you know, you have a microorganism, a new microorganism, you want to analyze 
uh, if, to see if it is a probiotic, if it uh, has a strength of survival, etc. It takes months, even year. Now, with this profile, we can analyze, we need only 10 hours to say if this particular strain is probiotic or non-probiotic or moderate. This is from a practical side. From a theoretical side, what I would say, you could see that th th these are the these are the loadings first and second, and the first and second load you could see the, the wavelengths that are activated. So you see, if you remember, this is um, water solvation shell. This is ion hydration band. This is S1, which is two water molecules with one hydrogen bond, very responsi responsible for the stability of the water system, molecular system. And this is ice cluster or hydrogen bond in water. Now, this is the program. Um, these are the probiotics. If you remember, when you increase the temperature, we get less hydrogen bond in water, and we have absorbance on the right side. So what we have with, non, with probiotic bacteria, probiotic bacteria is just working, is making water a, a motor, a working water. And a non-probiotic bacteria is not that bad. I mean, it doesn't go the whole side like this, but doesn't have these free water molecules, which are nearly very active. Uh, mostly active, I think, I would say. Um, and these are the moderate, they have both. They have these free water molecules, and they have hydrogen bonded water structures that are potentially uh, a kind of uh, potential for, for these actions here, but, but they have different, they specific spectral pattern. So they are in some, somewhere in between. And in, this, in the paper, you can find assignment of all activated bands by this bacteria. Um, so what we do, and I feel, at that time I feel very happy because there are many papers already in infrared spectroscopy, using infrared spectroscopy and very low number of water molecules at different conformations. So they identify the exact absorbance bands of those structures, as I showed you before. When we calculate the overtone of these bands, and when we see these overtones exactly in the place where our experiments show high variations, that's the happiest moment in my life. So you see that experimental data proves theoretical calculations. So, um, and, and these are the, the structures, and this is the, these are the bands that we found calculated as a wave numbers. This is the, the calculated uh, reference, bands from references, and this is the exact stru structure finding this reference. So you could go to the reference, you could, you could see what the structure means, and you could see where we can find it in the infrared. And now I, I just, I have five minutes. Um, I prepare this, uh, promptly while listening to Luke and, uh, and Jerry and um, um, so I just wanted to show, to, to link a little bit to what I was talking. Um, I think we, we would, uh, um, uh, Luke, we did an experiment and I, um, we, we got very good results, we presented this and, but we have not published it, but we have already this paper for, for DNA, and I think we're on the way we can write already. So that was a strategic, strategic uh, way to, to have something that people really understand. And, and, uh, but this is the oxidated cells. The, the blue spectra are oxidated cells. So this is what do they, don't, they don't have is this transition state and what between motor and the battery, and they have lots of, they, they will understand what exactly is there, but we could see 
what, what have pub has been published already uh, by Jerry's group that light is changing um, uh, uh, the, the water. And this is my group. And, um, okay, I'll, I'll finish with this. Thank you.